Question 13 from the 2019 Higher Physics SQA exam section 2. A student investigates the charging of a capacitor. The student sets up the circuit as shown using a 47 microfarad capacitor. The interface you can see is connected across the resistor and data is collected into the laptop. The capacitor is initially uncharged. The switch S is now closed. A laptop connected to an interface displays a graph of current against time as the capacitor charges. Now part A, the voltage, uh, the variable voltage supply is set at 6 volts and we have to calculate the maximum charge stored on the capacitor. So we know that the variable voltage supply is set at 6 volts and that will be the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor when it's fully charged. That will be when it has its maximum charge across it. So we know the voltage across the capacitor at this point is going to be 6 volts. We know the value of the capacitor is 47 microfarads, which is 47 times 10 to minus 6 per farad. And we're after Q, which is the maximum charge which is stored on the capacitor plates at that particular potential difference and capacitance. Well, we go and look at our capacitance equations, which is found in the data sheet. And you can see the one which has got C, Q, V in it is the top one. And that's the one we're going to use. So we're going to use capacitance is equal to the charge on the plates divided by the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor. We want to find Q, so we have to rearrange. So Q becomes equal to C times V. Plug in the numbers. Q equals 47 times 10 to minus 6 farads multiplied by 6.0 volts and if we do that on our calculator we end up with 2.82 times 10 to minus 4 remember coulombs is what the charge is measured in and don't get that mixed up with C for the capacitance we can do it to two significant figures so to two significant figures would be 2.8 times 10 to the minus 4 of a coulomb and that's your three marks question 13 part b the graph which has been taken from the data shows how the current i varies with the time t as the capacitor charges switch s is opened and the capacitor is discharged the resistor is now replaced with one which has a greater resistance the switch S again closed and the capacitor charges. We've got to add a line to the graph above to show how the current now varies with time as the capacitor charges. Well, the first thing we've got to notice is that when we have the resistance and it increases, then what happens is that the maximum current flowing the circuit, I maximum, is going to decrease. That's our first port of call. So it doesn't start here. It might start down somewhere here because a bigger resistance means they're going to have less current flowing so you're going to have less of a maximum current now because the resistance has increased the current decreases therefore the capacitor will take longer to charge up it's a bit like a tap on your sink if you put the, uh, increase the resistance of the tap you get a smaller dribble of water so what's going to happen is that the current is going to take longer to get to uh, the point here, so it's going to take a lot longer away down here, down there like that, if I can make these wee dots, and finally it goes along here to it's fully charged and there's no current flowing. So there's a kind of shape of your graph, you just draw a kind of curved line through that, but the key points to remember is that the new charging maximum current is going to be smaller and it's going to take longer, so the time to actually become fully charged the time is longer. So time is longer. And that's going to give you your two marks. Question 13, part C. Suggest an alteration a student could make to this circuit to increase the maximum energy stored by the 47 microfarad capacitor. Now, if we take a look at our representation of that circuit, you can see we're going to have the supply voltage, Vs, which we can change. You can see we've got a resistor, which... We can't change that value, and we have a capacitor, which we can't change that value as well. So really there's only one thing we can change in that circuit, and that is the supply voltage. And remember, when it's fully charged, when a capacitor becomes fully charged, 
it will have the maximum energy stored in it and in that case the potential difference across it will be equal to the voltage of the supply. So there's only one thing we can change in that circuit to increase the energy, the maximum energy stored in the capacitor and that's make it a bigger supply voltage. And we can see that from the equations of the capacitors. There we have the energy ones down the bottom there. And you can see the energy equation E is going to equal to one half of C V squared. This is the one that we'd use. You can change C and if you increase the supply voltage, you will increase V and you'll square that increase. So the answer to this question is uh, quite straightforward. To increase the maximum energy stored in that capacitor, you just simply increase the supply voltage, which will give a maximum, a bigger maximum voltage across the capacitor when it's fully charged, and therefore give it a bigger energy. Question 13, part D. And it's use your knowledge of physics to comment on this analogy. And as I said before, we've got three sort of things to make, three good points to make to show the examiner that you know your physics and you know what this is all about. So here we go then. The use of analogies from everyday life can help improve the understanding of physics concepts. And that's very much true. Vehicles using a car park may be taken as an analogy for the charging of a capacitor. To be honest, I've never thought that, but anyway, this person has, and let's see how he thinks about getting into a car park is to do with a capacitor charging. But before we do that, let's look at the simple circuit for a capacitor as part of our revision. We have a cell, we have a resistor, and we have the capacitor. Now, the minute that switch is closed, you're going to get a big rush of current around the circuit, because as the electrons leave the circuit, they start to build up on the capacitor plate. And likewise, at the other side of the plate, the electrons leave, and therefore you're going to have a current flowing. So the electrons flow this way through the resistor onto the plate, and at the other side they leave the plate due to the pulsion and leave the positive charge behind. So the capacitor is filling up. But as time goes on, more and more electric charges build up in this side, and leaving more and more positive charges this side as more move away. And it's you see that when other electrons come along, they're going to find it very difficult to get onto that plate because the push, if I can call it that, from the cell is not going to be strong enough to actually put those electrons onto that plate. Remember, the electric field for the, the cell might point this way, and of course the capacitor one is going to point that way. So you're going to get opposing almost like electric fields, therefore the electrons will not get onto the plate. So, we can represent that by looking at our data, which we had in the previous part of the question. You can see we have a big current at the start, and as more and more electrons run onto the plate, therefore the current is going to be reduced, because more and more electrons are going to find it harder to get on the plate. So the current reduces down to its fully charged, where the two fields oppose, and no electrons can move, therefore there's no current. So this position of graph here, we have the capacitor fully charged. Now the same thing can be thought about with the car park. You see, as the cars enter the car park over a speed bump, and we'll talk about that in a wee minute, they start to fill up places, just like the electrons on the wall of the capacitor, the plate of the capacitor, they start to fill up places and they can do it quite easily if the car park is not full because you can go all the way around here and there's a good flow of traffic. So the flow of the traffic is quite high at the beginning. But as more and more cars start to fill up the parking places, then it's going to be harder for cars to find a parking place. Therefore, they're going to have a slower flow of cars around here because some cars are stopping to see if they can find a parking place and then have to move on slightly until the car park is completely full and no cars can get into the car park. That's the equivalent of having the capacitor fully charged. Now the speed bump is very interesting because that speed bump could represent the resistor because if the speed bump is high enough, cars will slow down to come over the speed bump and as a result of that, there'll be a smaller flow of cars into the car park. Just the same way as we increase the resistance of the resistor in the charging circuit, then the current which comes from the cell will be a lot lower as well because 
Increased resistance means a reduction in current. Now we can put this all together in a table. You don't have to remember all this, but we can put it all together in a table and we can name, name one of them the capacitor and one of them the car park. And just go through our ideas and show the examiner that we know that the, the car park does sort of model the charging up circuit. So for example, for the capacitor, the initial current is high, it's a maximum, because no electrons have gathered on the plate, so you get a big initial flow of current. That corresponds to the car park having initially the first few cars will move through the car park without being held up to find a parking space. The next point, the current reduces to the fact that the more electrons gathering on the plate, thus preventing more electrons approaching because they are being repulsed and therefore the current decreases. And the car park's got the same analogy. As the car spaces fill up, then the cars start to be held up at the entry point and in the car park while they're looking for a free space. You've got this reduction of current. Finally, the capacitor is fully charged on, and the potential difference across the capacitor opposes any more electrons being pushed onto the plate. That's when the two electric fields from the cell and from the capacitor actually oppose each other, so no electrons will flow. And that corresponds to the car park scenario when the car park is full. No more cars can enter or go round the car park. And our final point, if we want to labour it, is the changing of the capacitor depends on the resistor of the circuit. The charging sorry, of the capacitor depends on the resistor on the circuit. If you have a big high resistance, then the charging time will be a lot slower. In the car park, if you make the speed bump bigger, then the flow of cars into the car park will be lower as well. So there you have a sort of kind of good model, and it's a really good model, that, and it pays you to study that model and learn all about a capacitor through the actions of cars going into a car park. Mm -hmm.